It's Dr. Klan. I hope everybody's doing well at home. I am coming to you today from my home and I have my camera crew, uh, Elizabeth's over there taping and my director over here, Mark, and he is, or we are practicing social distancing as I am sure that all of you are and that's the best way to keep ourselves safe so we can get back to school soon. So today I have a really big treat for you. Uh, when Dr. Rella was getting ready to retire, he had asked me if I would continue his book of the month or his book reading, and obviously I wanted to. So we taped a very special book. It was Dr. Rella's very favorite book out of all the books that he read to you, and he wanted it to be the first one that I did with you, and he was going to read it again. That was going to be you know, the last taping that we were going to make together, and we did that. We taped that book, and it is so funny. We had such a good time taping it, and I think you're really going to like it. Uh, the end of the year came, we taped it I think in June, and then everything got really, really busy, so we never actually put it out to everyone, and we were saving it, um, you know, maybe we were going to do something with it a little bit later, but I think that this is the perfect time to have a, uh, a book reading from our good friend Dr. Rella, and I know that he would be really happy knowing that you're all home safe and, and, and learning and working hard and doing a really good job with your parents. Um, Please, please be extra patient with your parents and don't give them a hard time. I know this is new for all of us, so you know, do your work, that's your job right now, because as hard as it is for us, it's really hard for our grown-ups because they have a lot of things that they're handling right now. So the more you can help with them, keep everything clean, be polite, do your work, don't argue, you know, I know that that will go a long way. And at the end of the book, I will tell you what I think we should do next. So happy reading. Good morning, boys and girls. How are you? Last week or two weeks ago when we had uh, the day of service, I don't remember if it was last week or two weeks ago, but whenever we had it, I was in classrooms and one of the classes I was in, um, the teacher told me that you had looked at, they had looked at a story uh, from story time in the past. And then one of the students in the class said, oh, you're gonna do another one. So I got together with Dr. Quinn and here's Dr. Quinn. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and we decided we were going to do a story together for a couple of reasons. Um, as you know, I'm retiring, and Dr. Quinn is our new superintendent, and I'm very happy about that. But more importantly than just being superintendent, she is now the queen of story time. Yay. Henceforth. <laughs> so we decided to read a story together. And this is one of my favorite stories. And in fact, the book which is over here, it's called The Book With No Pictures. Now I've read this before and it was given to me, this is my book, this is my copy, it was given to me, uh, uh, to me uh, by a close friend of mine, Mr. Heber, you've seen him in classes. He does all our uh, computer stuff along with Mr. Franzese and Mr. Rabori. We have wonderful people and uh, uh, Ms. Sublionis. So we have a lot of people that work, we have a lot of computers in classes, a lot of technology. And technology is only good if you know how to use it. So we're going to read this story together. And remember, the book has no pictures. So don't be thinking you're going to all of a sudden a picture is going to pop up. It's not. And it's by a man named B.J. Novak. It's a man, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. This is a book with no pictures. It might seem like no fun to have someone read you a book with no pictures. It probably seems boring and serious, except... Here's how the book works. Everything the words say, the person reading the book has to say. No matter what. You can't just skip it. That's the deal. That's the rule. So that means even if the words say blork, wait, wait, what? That doesn't even mean anything. Blurf. Wait a second, what? This isn't the kind of book I wanted to read. And I have to say every word in the book that the book says, uh-oh. 
I am a monkey who taught myself to read. Hey, I'm not a monkey. And now I am reading you this book with my monkey mouth <laughs> in my monkey voice. <laughs> That's not true. I'm not a monkey. Yes, I am a monkey. <laughs> also, I am a robot monkey. What? <laughs> And my head is made of blueberry pizza. Wait a second. Is this whole book a trip? trick? Can I stop reading, please? No. And now it's time for me to sing you my favorite song. A song? Do I really have to sing a song? <laughs> glog, glog, glog. My face is a bug. I eat ants for breakfast right off the rug. Glug, 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 my face is a bug. I eat ants for breakfast right off the rug. What? <laughs> <laughs> this book is ridiculous. Can I stop reading it? No. There are more pages. I have to read the rest. Oh, no. My only friend in the whole wide world is a hippo named Boo Boo Butt. Boo Boo Butt? And also, the kid I'm reading this book to is the best kid ever in the history of the entire world. Oh, really? Yep. And this kid is the smartest kid, too, because this kid chose this book even though it had no pictures. Because kids know this is the book that makes grown-ups have to say silly things. And make silly sounds, like... Oh no, here it comes. Blur. Gawak. Ma. Aye, aye. Bro, bro, bro. Oomph. Eef. Bliggity, blaggity. Glibbity globbity. Globbity glibbity. Beep boop. Eeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee